Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to a brand new episode of We Need to Talk. It is so good to be back. We've yes. been gone for a minute, but we got some stuff to talk about. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Do we ever? Uh, mm. Unfortunately, in this uh, few weeks that we've been gone, Trump is still president. Nothing. Did, oh, wow. N- yeah. That has not changed. No, nope. still there. <laughs> Still <laughs> but um, we're going to be talking about when they see us. We're also going to be talking about police brutality and the criminal justice system. There have been uh, a few incidences that have, have happened recently that have made me sick to my stomach. Mm. And not that it's anything new that's been happening nope. in the last, I don't even know, 50, 60 years, 100 years. Um, it's, it's it's really bad right now. Um, but let's, let, let's dive into uh, when they see us a little bit. If you have not seen it stop listening and go yeah. watch it and then come back and listen. We're not really going to give anything away in that sense. Cause if, if you haven't heard of the central park five case, I don't know where you've been. Yes. Yeah, so like if, <laughs> if you haven't seen the series, you haven't seen the series, but the yeah. story has been around since it happened. So you can research and study it. Cause we're going to talk about it today. We are just, gonna talk, have to yes. Yes. Cause we need to talk about it. So yeah. if you don't know about the central park five case, which I, I I'm surprised to see how many people didn't know about yeah, this. Yeah, me too. And that, that's what's so frustrating to me. But basically what happened, this happened in 1989. There was a young white woman that was jogging in Central Park at 9 p.m. And at that time, uh, the phrase wilding, I guess, is was when that became a thing. Uh, there were a bunch of kids just going out in the park attacking people and, mm-hmm. you know, throwing things at them, hitting them. Not really, quote unquote, causing like too much physical harm but just really being annoying yeah. let's just say Mischievous. and um there were five guys that ended up being uh at the wrong place at the wrong time basically just hanging out with as friends and uh this young woman named trisha miley she was brutally attacked brutally raped and left for dead um by a ditch in in central park she was found at 1 a.m later that morning the attack happened between 9 p.m and 10 p.m that night and then five young men between the ages of 14 and 16 were uh, charged and convicted of uh, assault, uh, battery, rape, um, attempted, and murder. attempted murder, mm-hmm. um, and sent to jail between five to 15 years. And uh, later in, in 2002, so keep in mind they were sent to jail in 1990 at this point because it happened in 1989, trial happened and they were sent to jail in 1990. Uh, in 2002, the actual um, felon and perpetrator of this crime came forward and confessed and they were then exonerated. So this series uh, by the incredible Ava DuVernay, if you don't know who she is, she did Selma, she's done 13th, she's just Queen Sugar. She co-wrote and directed this incredible series on Netflix to tell the story from the perspective of the young men. Yeah. And so, again, so the, I remember the story um, when it came out. I think we just talked about this before we came on air. Like I remember it in post, like after they got exonerated. Mm-hmm. And then, oh, yeah, I remember, you know, because I was, I think... 12 at the time when it actually happened mm-hmm. um so when they got exonerated it was like oh wow okay you know that's that's cool they got out uh it was a tragedy but now watching it and seeing all the details um it's probably one of the most disturbing things uh, i've ever seen absolutely um, absolutely the 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 way our justice system treated these kids and it's funny not even just the kids but um patricia miley like her attacker came out years later Mm -hmm. and confessed to this. And I'm like, if the cops had just did their job, we'll talk more about the details, but the cops had just did their job, Mm -hmm. they would have found this guy. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. Cause yeah. And, and, and if you, when you see the series, uh, you'll see how, um, that night there was a bunch of people out in the park. Um, but this specific, um, crime, if you're a decent cop, a decent cop would have figured this out. Mm Mm-hmm. And even the details that come out during the case of the trial, you're like, I remember several times thinking, okay, well, that's it. Oh, well, that's it. Oh, right. well, well, that's the one. There were so many pieces of evidence that not only did not point to these kids, yeah. pointed to someone else. 100%. And nonetheless, these five boys went to jail. Mm-hmm. And I think... So a couple of things, what hit me the most about this series, because if you, there is also a documentary uh, with the actual five in their adulthood that talk. I don't know if you've seen this mm-hmm. before. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, I, I, I researched it after I saw this series and watching that, it's like you get, you know, you get a lot of the details and it's sad to see them. But what 
strikes me the most about the series is that you see them as kids. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's what pulled at my heartstring the most because you realize in watching this series just how young they were. Yes. And how, and I can't fathom these adult cops and detectives not putting their children in that position. Like, am I, would I want somebody to treat my child this way? Mm. But it goes to show you that when it comes to black and brown bodies, everything changes. Yeah. And that's, and I think like sometimes in the in the series where you keep hearing someone say, you know, um, my child, my child, or my son. And I'm thinking, yeah, do the cops not understand that this is someone's kid? Right. Like, right. the way you're treating this child, um, your child could be treated that way. But again, if these cops are white, they don't see these these kids as their kids. Yeah. And they don't see them as kids. As kids at all. Yeah. And they he treated these little boys like grown men. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um like grown felons. Yeah. Like they were treated like not only had they committed the crime, but like they had a history of committing crimes. Right. The way they talked to them, the way they approached them. Everything right. was like the, these guys were like thirty year old hardened criminals. Mm-hmm. And they're like fourteen year old kids, mm-hmm. babies. Mm-hmm. And I think sometimes when I and I'll, and I'll say I'm guilty of this when I see, you know, certain black men who are wrongfully accused of anything, and I I am guilty of thinking, okay, well, did they do something, or did they have a criminal past? So like maybe yeah, you have a misdemeanor in your record, mm-hmm. so it's possible you might get wrongly accused of a felony. Yeah, it's still wrong, but yeah, you've done something in the past right. that put right. you in. So I, I'm guilty of that. And this, so I, yeah, I agree. Well, we're conditioned to think that way. Exactly. Even against our own people yes. sometimes. For yes. sure. For sure. So seeing them as kids totally changes it. Yeah. Totally makes yeah, it, okay, yeah, yeah. this is beyond wrong. Yeah. It was so, out the gate, <laughs> as soon as it starts, I'm like, what? Because like I remember, there's, there's a part in, in the movie where I remember myself being out with my friends like them. Mm-hmm. And they show them like just being kids. And then how quickly it shifts. It could have been me. And I'm like, there's nothing I could have done. Mm-hmm. Like this, this, this whole department needed to put it on someone. And as soon as they had anyone, anybody, anyone, yeah. it was done. It was Which goes to show you with uh, Corey Wise, who um, his story, I think, is the her- most harrowing of all of them. Um, he wasn't on the list of the boys that were in the park, wasn't on the list of the boys that the cops were supposed to go find. He wasn't on anybody's list. He literally went down to the police station to be with his friend Youssef, who was on the list Mm -hmm. and was one of the boys that they were supposed to investigate. And he ended up getting uh, sentenced to 15 years in jail and put in the adult prison. And he went through quite possibly the worst of any of them. And anybody that I've seen in situations like this, I just I can't believe what this child went through. He was 16 years old and he was beaten. He was raped. He was transferred, I think, three or four times just trying to be close to his mom Mm -hmm. and was in jail for 13 years. And the only reason that he got out was because he actually was confronted by Matias Reyes who was the actual felon that committed this crime against Trisha Miley. Yeah. Um, and like, for me, I'm always trying to find the silver lining because had he, in the three parole hearings that he did have, had he just come forward and been like, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry, I did it. Mm-hmm. He would have never gotten exonerated. None of these boys would have ever gotten exonerated. Yeah. And it sucks that he almost had to be a martyr in that case, but I'm so glad that he didn't get paroled just for that to happen. Isn't that crazy? It is so crazy, wow. but it's so sad that it even had to get to this point. Right. And uh, one thing I, I also uh, realized in watching this series that I didn't get until seeing this series was just how um, much of a cycle the system is. Mm-hmm. And it, it, it was with, um, I think it was at Raymond, um, how he he was in jail, got out of jail, went to go try to find a job, couldn't find a job. Mm-hmm. Only job he could find was dealing drugs. Mm-hmm. And then he ended up getting caught dealing drugs and that put him back in jail. jail. And that light bulb really just clicked for me. Like they really set you up Mm -hmm. so that you just end up back behind bars. Yes. I think it was his parole officer that was talking to him Mm -hmm. about how you have to fill this out, fill this out on your application. And if you don't check that you're a felon and they put you in a a situation where you're working next to another, another felon that will, um, uh, Revoke your parole. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, so wait, so you have to tell your employer that you're a felon, which probably means you won't get a job. Right. 
And if you don't and they put you next to a felon, they'll put you back in jail. Mm-hmm. So, yes, you have to go back to a life of crime. The yeah. only way you can you can actually uh, survive mm-hmm. is in jail. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's just, it was like, wait, what? Like you And, and not only that to have to, um, uh, what do you call it? When you have a, uh, oh my God, a sex offense in your own. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 They have to do that for life? Yeah. You register as a sex offender. Register as a yeah. sex offender for life. For something you didn't do. Yeah. Like, it was just like, there's no way all this is happening. And you can just even feel his frustration. It's like, yeah. what? I have no chance here. So, so yeah, going to a life of crime, it's like, well, okay, if I make it and I, and I make some money and I don't get caught, okay, cool. And then it's like, great. But if I do get caught, whatever. Mm-hmm. I already, I've already been in jail already. Yeah, exactly. It's like, whatever, I, I can do that again. Like, they already start placing you in that mentality that, like, the system... Like you have to work inside the system now. Like you can't, mm-hmm. you can't get out of it. And they did nothing. Like they again, did nothing. I understand if you have committed a crime before, right, right, and this is your thing, and you just put yourself in that system. They did nothing. Nothing. Just walking out at night. And yeah. that's funny because I've, I've, as a kid growing up, my mom would always tell me, "No, get in before the street lights come on. Don't be in the wrong place at the wrong time. Don't hang out with the wrong people." Cool, I get that. These kids literally. Were, and one of his dad told him to go to the park mm-hmm. to go have fun. Like don't don't be on the streets. And then Corey, <laughs> it didn't matter what Corey did, yeah, because yeah. he got arrested after the fact. Yeah, he just said, like, if you guys haven't seen the seen it yet, again, go watch it because we're gonna say some things that might be spoilers. But like, this is after the fact where the cops are going to look for the, some of these kids. And Yusuf, whose name was on the list, like you just said, mm-hmm. Corey's like, okay, I'm gonna go with my friend because they're taking him down to the station. And the cops are like, yo, do you want to go with him? He's like, yeah, I'll go with him just to give him support. And then Corey gets by. Corey was in Attica. He was in Rikers. He's in the worst prisons, all because he wanted to go hang out with his friend to give him support. So there's really nothing Corey could have done. Nothing. He could have not gone to the park. He could have not. He could have been at the house mm-hmm. that night. The next day, he's walking home with Yusuf, and he gets detained. Yeah, and spends 13 years of his life in prison. And when you see this, when you see the, the series, it's if you haven't seen it already, it's absolutely brutal mm-hmm. what he goes through mm-hmm. as a child. Mm-hmm. Like not a, again, not an adult man. Cause like, I think, okay, if I was in that situation in my twenties or thirties, okay, it would have been tough. I could not imagine at 16, Yeah, 16 years old, having to be with hardened felons at Rikers. Like I, for something you didn't do. Something you didn't do. At, uh, it, the more I think about it, the angry I, or I get and the sadder I get, but to kind of shift away from the bad part of this series Jarell Jerome who played Corey Wise mm. if he doesn't get all of the Emmys yes <laughs> if yes. he doesn't get all of the Emmys like that boy is so talented goosebumps I literally I, even now I'm getting goosebumps by his his performance was just so amazing yeah like this kid I felt every yeah. single piece of his yeah. emotions and yeah. everything he was going yeah. through in every single scene it was real it was the real deal unbelievable I, I'm just I'm so excited to see where his career goes and I'm like I just I wish him a Denzel Washington career yes because I mean th- this child is only 21 and when you see what he does on screen it's it's like he's lived that yeah I I mean I saw you know at the end of the series they show the pictures of mm-hmm. the, the guys I expect the Corey's face to pop up yeah because <laughs> I'm like and I saw the, the real Corey I'm like no that's not him <laughs> <laughs> that's not Corey. Who's this? Because like he was so yeah. believable, he was like he really amazing was. performance. It was, it was unbelievable. So when it, I, I'm not well versed enough in the criminal justice system because I feel like the the deeper I will dive into it, the more angry I will be. Mm-hmm. But I think one of the main things I th- want people to realize is what I was just talking about is that it is a cycle mm-hmm. for Black and Brown people to just remain within. Yeah, and I think. There has to be some sort of rehabilitation for people. Well, especially if, let's say, for like little things for like marijuana. I mean, we could get into like people still being in jail over marijuana. Mm-hmm. And now that's on, now they're going to be considered a felon when they get out of jail. When you have white men who are now millionaires in that yeah. system, there's yeah. no way to completely remove that from their record or get them through a program. It's like, okay, if you go through this three months of classes, this is going to be taken off your record so that you can actually go back into society as a normal citizen, be able to vote, be able to get a job, be able to have a new life. Mm-hmm. And I just don't understand why we're, well, I do understand, but it's frustrating that they're not giving those opportunities to actually make amends when there's people like Brock Turner, who they're like, oh, I, you know, I feel bad that, you know, your your future is going to be ruined. So I'm only going to give you six months in jail and then you only serve three 
And now you get to go back out into society. Yes, he is registered as a sex offender for the rest of his life as well. But the fact that the judge showed him mercy for something that he did do. He did do. He did do. There was evidence. It was proven that he did it. And he only spent six months in jail when these little babies were in jail for five to 13 years over something that they didn't do. Not only didn't do, absolutely no evidence that they did it. That's the Nothing. other thing. Zero evidence. Like, not one shred of hair, nope. drop of blood, nope. piece of DNA, nothing put these No body kids, fluids, nothing. nothing. Not a single thing. And what upsets me the most, yes, we know that Linda Farstein is the devil, but what upsets me the most about the prosecutor, I think her name was Linda Federer, I think, or no, um... Elizabeth Federer, I'm, I'm going to look up the name in a second, but the prosecutor, she knew that it was fishy. Yes, yes. She knew that it was fishy, and she should have stopped it. When when Linda brought that case to her, she should have been like, you know what? <laughs> like from the jump, because I'm thinking, okay, I, I understood why they were pinning it on these, because they just needed someone right. to fill. Uh, uh, they were basically casting uh, actors for this role they needed someone for the the public to see that they were doing their job and right. as a new york pd they were uh getting these guys off the streets so just someone to fill the, in the space mm-hmm. but then at the same time i'm like you kind of need to find the real person here You're right like this person is still out there uh they're still able to uh harm the public and i think f- to serve her just it's like if you want to do two cases at least do that right okay we're gonna get these boys we're gonna we need someone you know to pin the case on but at the same time, we're going to actually go find the real perpetrator. They didn't do that. Right. Just, okay, we got them. Okay, we're good. Yeah. Like And yeah, and she knew from the jump, none of this made sense. They didn't fit the timeline, didn't fit the description, didn't fit any of this stuff. Mm-mm. And Mm-mm. she went with it. Yeah. Elizabeth Letterer is her name. That I was Elizabeth a little Letterer. looking at. Okay. Um, but yeah, I was really, I was actually most disappointed in her mm-hmm. because she had the power to stop it. Yeah. And she didn't. Yeah. Um, in all of the detectives, I, I just feel like at a certain point, you have to look at this and be like, guys, we don't really have a case here. Yeah, but n- no one did. Nobody did. And then that jury, I have to understand why the jury would ever think that this was okay to not sentence those boys. Person? Like, not Yeah, if it was a hung jury, I'd be like, okay, that makes sense. But like, it was a unanimous, <laughs> it was a unanimous vote that these kids clearly, were. they clearly did it because it was so obvious. Like, with if you just put it in a vacuum like just like okay completely void of anything anything else other than what you're in the court to see just looking at the boys yeah yeah and then looking at her i would i would at least had enough inside of me to say yeah i'm not sure mm-hmm. versus unanimous on several counts like what right attempted murder like some of these kids couldn't even hold a gun probably to shoot the girl, right. let alone brutally attack her. Yeah. And like the the coercing of them to come up with these, you know, fake, uh, what do you call it? Situations inside. The, like yeah. none of it fit. Like yeah, yeah, one yeah. kid said this, one kid said that. Right. We're over here. We're in all the situations these kids came up with. Mm-hmm. One, they were just trying to push the, the crime on someone else away yes. from them. So they were just pinning it on the other kid. And then none of the stuff fit. Like, as a cop, like, there's not one cop in the New York Police Department, at least in that precinct, that would have thought, mm, this ain't good. Mm-hmm. This ain't working. This isn't right. This is not them. We need to find the real person. None of them? And not cross-referencing other crimes that have happened in that area. Like, you had Matias Reyes arrested at that time. Why not look at the other things that he's done and see, hmm, mm. maybe we should test him. And see if he was one of the perpetrators because we've already arrested or test this guy or test this guy because they are already committing crimes that seem kind of similar to this situation. Isn't that basic? To me, that's cop basic. Work? Yeah, like absolutely. This woman was brutally raped in this park. You brutally raped someone. Hey, you were out <laughs> around this time. You could have probably done this. Seems so simple. Nothing. Not okay. one person thought that. Yeah, let's look at this. No. no. Yeah. Then to have evidence of with someone else's DNA. Yeah. That was the kicker to me. Yeah. They had something that had DNA on it. I'm thinking, okay, if you look that up, you have the person. And that should have been the end of it. Should have been the end. Soon, and this was before these kids were sentenced. Mm-hmm. They had this evidence mm-hmm. there. And they decide not to test it. 
Okay. So it for me, it just it continues just to show, and I, I say this all the time, like this system, this country is not built for us. Right. And right. so the more we keep seeing things like this, it just slams home that fact. And it makes me feel like, okay, I know this, but then how do you actually move in a system that not only isn't designed for you, but it's out to get you. Like yeah. these kids were singled out and taken out of their homes and put into the prison system. Mm-hmm. And then once you're in that system, like if they weren't exonerated, those kids, would their rest of their lives would have been ruined. For sure. So thank God, you know. I mean, their lives still are ruined. Still, they, yes. Their childhood they was taken yes, away from completely them. Completely taken but, away. I, but yeah, for sure get what you're saying. Um, but I just, I want to find steps to change this and I don't know what the next step is. I mean, I know we have to, we, Jex would say vote for, you know, for those people that will work to create legislation to change the criminal justice system. But it's hard to have faith in something that is so, that has lasted this long. See, and- and I and I I love Drexel for his passion for politics, <laughs> but this to me is beyond politics. Mm. This is this is so systemic and so yeah. in the fabric of our country. Like, you know, Ava DuVernay's other um, production, Thirteenth. If you haven't yeah. seen that, mm-hmm. go watch yes, it because yes, it yes. talks about the Thirteenth Amendment. And I've said this before. And it's funny when it, when she came out with it. I think I literally was talking to people about that before it came out. I'm like, mm. it was kind of. The synchronicity was interesting, but slavery uh, has never been gone, people. It's just changed. Yep. And yep. I tell that to people and they freak out. Oh, you talking about Carmel? Well, <laughs> our prison system um, is exactly that. Yep. And I always think if people just look at the fact that America has the largest prison population in the world mm-hmm. and it's not even close, like we are so far ahead of every other country. Like, so India and China have by far way more people than us i think china has two billion i think india has a billion we have 300 million our prison population is larger than india's and china's combined wow we have a third of india's population we have what one sixth of china we have more than triple the we have two million people in our prison population i think we are was it for every hundred thousand people we have six hundred fifty five, like that's that the China and China Russia, India are not even on the top ten of per hundred thousand people um, incarcerated. Mm. Like we're next to Turkmenistan and I think El Salvador. It's like oh, some countries known for some bad stuff. We're, right. We and we're still ahead of them. Just that right. you guys know, we're right, still right, we're right. first on all incarceration levels because the prison population, the prison system is a humongous moneymaker. Like even in this series, when they talk about how calling, calling uh, their child in, in prison mm-hmm. costs them like $23 a minute. Jeez. Like what? Wow. Like what? Why are we trying? You understand these people probably don't have the money or they would probably would bail their kid out to begin of course, with of course. or had a lo- uh, you know, paid for a lawyer to keep them out of jail, you know, but we all don't have that because we're not Brock Turner's and, you know, in the Duke lacrosse team and, you know, other <laughs> affluent white folks I'll, yeah. I'll leave out. But like, so then you put them in a system where now you're taking money from their family and now you're getting free labor from these people and you start to think, okay, that is slavery. That's mm. exactly how this country got its start yeah. on the backs of slaves and built huge empires. And there's a, there's a um, article by the Atlanta Atlanta Black Star that shows how many corporations got their start on slavery. Mm. So now we trans, you know, transform that into the prison population, and you start looking at how many people are in prison and looking at that population. Blacks make up thirteen percent of the U.S. population. Mm-hmm. We make up thirty-seven percent of the prison population. Wow. So, I, I to people, when you look at that, do you not see what's going on? Like, it's not. It's so obvious. Thirty-seven mm-hmm. percent of the prison. So it's triple. Triple the amount of blacks in the country are in prison. Mm. On top of that, our country is the most incarcerating country in the world. Yeah. What else needs to be said? Like, what are we not getting? So mm-hmm. I, I, so I hear like we need to change legislation on that. I don't think it's going to change. We, we're making way too much money off of prisons. Absolutely, so it's what, a billion so, dollar industry. So how, like, and there, there's more prisons in our country than colleges. Mm. It's not going to change. So I, I, so I. I hear what you're saying about like how can we change the legislation. I, like, 
why would why would legislators change when they're making that much money? Yeah. Like what they're they're gonna lose from that? Like they're they're gaining. You Not know, care if you're Democrat or Republican, you're making money off of the prison population. Well, it comes down to who's running. That's that that's what the thing is. Is that we got to get people to run for office that are wanting to make differences. That's in the that thing. sense. That's the thing. So we have to start with backing people that want to change this and want to change this narrative and turn it around. But it's getting people to step up to, to do that. Cause that's hard. Like I, I know a lot of people who probably would want to do some great things. Uh, don't have the millions of dollars to run a campaign. Uh, maybe don't have the political history uh, to affect someone who's an incumbent. Um, there's so many things like for someone that <clears throat> hinders them to become an elected official. Yeah. They don't try yeah. So I, you know, in, in watching that documentary, I was thinking. So, like, what do we really do? Like, when you look at the very like first principles, like, okay, let's go back to the baseline. How do we change this? Um, I honestly couldn't come up with any good ideas. Yeah. Like I can, because there's so many things that are wrong. Like I'm, I don't know where to start. Yeah. And I, I usually can look at any problem and come with a solution, um, but I couldn't with this. I couldn't either. I couldn't either. It's hard. But we want to hear from you guys and see what you yeah, think you as ideas. well. If you have any ideas, please, please, please write us on Facebook, Instagram, tweet us, all of the above. Uh, we're going to shift gears a little bit, even though it's kind of within the same thing. And we're going to talk a little bit about police brutality, which, as we've seen in the last few years, um, the videos that have erupted on social media have caused uproars and people are finally starting to listen to people of color when we say that this has been an ongoing issue for many, many years. In the 50s and 60s, when we knew all of these situations happened, we really only saw on TV what would happen with protests. Yeah. We didn't know how much it was happening in, in small scale situations, in small towns, over little things. Um, and I'm grateful to social media for that mm -hmm. because I think that now people are really starting to realize that black and brown bodies are being targeted um, specifically for just that. Mm -hmm. um, and it's easy now to compare situations with white people that happened with black and brown bodies. So there's a specific situation that happened recently that quite honestly was one of the most disturbing things I have ever seen. And um, if you're unaware of the family in Phoenix mm. uh, and the 10 police uh, cars and, and people that pulled them over after their daughter allegedly walked out of a dollar store with a, a doll, which, <clears throat> I, you know, I, I've babysat in my lifetime and I've definitely had kids do that. And we've mm -hmm. walked right back in the store, handed it back and nothing has happened to mm -hmm. us. Um, I myself actually have probably done that. I'm sure when I was little and oh, yeah. we're lucky enough that nothing happened, but apparently uh, they were at a dollar store. Little girl walked out with a doll. Parents didn't realize it till they got back to their apartment building. But when they got to their apartment building, that they were dropping, actually the apartment building of their babysitter, excuse me, uh, all of these cop cars pulled up, banging on their car window, um, had guns drawn on them. Um, a lot of expletives were shared um, from these cops. They uh, made them come out of the car. They threw the father up against the, the, the car and spread his legs. They One of the cops tried to yank the baby out of the mom's hands, told her to put the baby on the ground. It really is one of the worst videos I've ever seen. And, it, and it's so shocking that it got to that point. And I shouldn't yeah. be shocked at this point, but I just, as watching it, I'm like, what is, why are they so angry? Yes. That's because when you watch it, the expletives, the, every other word, mm -hmm. like what did they do to you? Like it, I almost felt personal. It felt so it felt personal. personal. Yes, I'm like yes, they, yes. they literally, like it almost felt like they killed a cop. Yeah. Because yeah. it was, there was so, and it was instant anger instant just fury and i'm like this four-year-old girl took a doll mm -hmm. and we're sending this many cops after him yeah. like this and like i almost wonder like did your like commander rile you up before like, we gotta go get this little girl and like get, yeah. get them so it, hyped that when they got there they came out like that and i'm like what is going on with this police department like yeah. it one cop car honestly did the cops need to come? Like, I, they could have just sent like a dollar, dollar general manager and I would have just given back the doll. Right. Like, loss prevention, security well, just guard. Give him a dollar. It's, it was a yeah, dollar. It's a dollar. Doll. Just give him a dollar. But 10 cop cars coming out like that? And I'm yeah. like, 
and then and then the instructions like hands up i'm gonna kill you and i'm i'm, I'm saying it as plain as plain and bland as possible because yes. it was not like this Mm-mm. uh get out before i shoot you get your hands up get against the car i mean and put a cap in your head right like what huh i, I don't understand why they, they came at this woman who is obviously pregnant and obviously holding a baby holding an infant an infant like what one what could she do to you right now and two why are you so mad at her so angry like you they obviously know now I was, maybe they didn't know so i'm gonna i'm gonna give them benefit, benefit of the doubt maybe they didn't know what actually transpired at the dollar general maybe they were told this couple is a uh you know crazy store robbing couple that's just you know running rampant through phoenix mm-hmm. and we need to shut this down and 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 get them because like they're dangerous okay so you get there and you realize that's not the case right <laughs> so like you have a four-year-old girl with a doll uh, a pregnant mom holding an infant and a and a and a, and a fiance or i don't know if they were married or not it's her fiance fiance yeah. and he's a very slight individual himself mm-hmm. i'm like in a like Mitsubishi Montero, like I, I don't think this is <laughs> they're really that uh, much of a danger, folks. Mm-hmm. I think we can go ahead and take care of this, like some civilized cops. Yeah. No, they went at these people like they were the Taliban, like they were absolutely <laughs> about to bl- blow up all of Phoenix. Yeah. I think the the crucial part that we are forgetting also is the person who made the phone call. Yes. And, you know, there's been a um, (laughs) a trend of people calling the cops on black people for existing. Mm -hmm. Um, And I'm really curious to know what the phone call said, who called and and why. If they saw a little girl just take a doll, why wouldn't you just stop the family? That's what I'm saying. They must. She must have said something worse than just she had to. Because like there's no way not. Again, I, and I keep saying this, again. This is the same with the New York Police Department in the in the when they see us, and this set of cops. Mm-hmm. Like, not one of you could act like an adult. Yeah. Like none of them. Yeah. So it's got to come from the top down, because I can't imagine they they all just woke up like that uh, that day. But like, sis, or they I, did. If, which I mean, it's possible. They could it's, just be this is angry ve- individuals. This is very consistent behavior. So maybe this is just yeah. the way police departments are ran. Um. And again, it's all white cops, mm-hmm. all white cops, yeah, and a black family in Phoenix. If in we Phoenix. didn't say that, yeah, right. And there was more babies than adults there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. so that then that's this is the way. So what if they were some felons? I would man, I would love to see how they would react then. Like if this was some really dangerous people, I mean, they must have just. Oh, they would have been dead, right? Even with their babies. It's just, I I never, when cops are trained, even though I'm starting to see that they're not trained properly, but when they are quote unquote trained to learn how to de-escalate situations, where is that training in any of these videos that have been popping up on social media over the last few years? Because to this day, I have not seen a cop de-escalate any situation. I've only seen them escalate situations and make it 10 times worse than what it needs to be. If you got a call that somebody stole a Barbie doll from a dollar store, I'd be like, you know what? I'm just going to go to the apartment and be like, hey, were you aware that your child stole this doll? Mm -hmm. Okay. Can you either return it or pay for it? That would have been, that should have been the end of it. No, no, you got 10 cop cars drawing guns on them when she's holding a baby, telling her to put her her baby on the hot ground in Arizona. If you haven't been to Arizona, it is disrespectfully hot. And you're telling (laughs) them to put their children on the ground. On the ground. And cussing at them like they are really stole i don't care if they stole a tesla none of that was necessary never it's never necessary what's funny is you said they always escalate the situation but we've seen them in a case of arresting dylan roof Mm -hmm. who killed nine people and treat him to burger king to burger king right so wait a minute a person who murders nine people you can arrest peacefully and then get them something to eat yeah okay but a little girl walks out of a store, a dollar store, mind you, it, which means it wasn't even a real Barbie. <laughs> Can we talk about that? So it's not even at like retail price. It right. was from a Dollar General store. And that requires 10 cops and guns. To forcibly 
pull you over, pull you out, out of the, and is ready to use excessive force yeah. if you don't comply. Yeah. 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 Um, so, g- again, this makes me think, and looking at our system, mm-hmm. um, they wanted to either arrest these people or kill them. Because for them, that works. That 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 fills out the narrative of these cops and this police department doing their job. Um, so let's say let's let's carry this out. Let's say the situation happened and they were either arrested or killed. How does the story get written then? Is it police department um, detains uh, bank robbing or store robbing <laughs> family uh, saves Phoenix? Uh, you know. What do you? What do you? How does this? How does this how help do you? Spin you? This? How yeah. do you spin this yeah. to make your department look yeah. good? Because that's the only thing I can think they're trying to do yeah. with the way they treat us and the way they um, police us. Because in other situations, like again with Dylan Roof mm-hmm. or the kid who just shot up, um, the kid who's burning up the, the churches in in Alabama, they yeah. arrest yeah. these people yeah. very peaceably, yeah, uh, quietly. But it looks like they are doing their job. We got them. We're going to rehabilitate them. We're going to, you know, clean this up, whatever. Fine. But with us, it's like you need to do this. Like you need to put us away, Mm -hmm. regardless if we committed the crime or not. Like there's certain things you remember. We've all had this myth about cops having quotas. I'm starting to believe it more and more. There's something that has to happen for them that for sure getting black people arrested or killed fulfills some kind of like you know um unwritten quota something Mm -hmm. something about that um there's a reward to that because why else would you be this crazy about doing that like there's nothing in life i can think i'm going to go at harder unless it's going to bring me money or some kind of glory or promotion or something like like i'm not angry at anyone this much right um and i'm not going to go out with that much passion except when i play football i when i play football i'm I'm out i'm out to take off some hits (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I'm, just like, I'm competitive like that so like what about these cops all of these cops like i said from new york to phoenix what and of course in la what is it that they're being told what is it that's this unwritten rule or quota or line that they know that we don't that's causing them to be this angry it's a and good this question passionate it's towards a very good question arresting and killing us yeah no it's a great question and i don't know if you saw this recent find this recent study that showed that um, several hundred cops throughout the country are a part of members only racist hate groups hmm. and hmm. to me I mean it's very very telling but this is something in this day and age you can find out what kind of groups people are a part of on Facebook mm-hmm. you should not hire them to be cops right because right. they're already going to have an implicit bias mm-hmm. and that is who they're going to be targeting when they try to reach their quotas black and brown bodies they're part of racist facebook groups facebook. or they've also found they've also found that in their time even before because you can find archives okay the, the, nothing is ever deleted let nothing. me just make sure you guys yes, understand nothing. that nothing is ever deleted they found that a lot of cops have made you know racist posts or posted you know memes about obama things in the past and it, it's so shocking to me it's like so you are sending these people out into the world to quote unquote protect and serve when they're really only going to protect and serve people that look like them yeah and they're given a reason and, and, and an ability to kill those that they hate already like you, you're hiring someone and giving them the opportunity that he can shift the narrative to find a reason and a way to kill this person mm-hmm. that you knew they hated, mm-hmm. or you could have found that out. Mm-hmm. So when you look at, and I've had this discussion with people on Facebook about, um, someone posted, who is the most terrorizing group in our, in our, in our world? Mm. And I, 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 I knew right away and I was just stunned to see people say with like consistency radical islam i'm like what really what i'm like okay we're not talking about what you see on the news (laughs) because if you even go to to google and wikipedia and add up all the islamic terrorist attacks Mm -hmm. and 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 subsequent deaths it may reach a hundred thousand maybe now i posted this way on purpose because i'm 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 a person who likes to be incendiary and i get people riled up Mm -hmm. i said radical christians by far and Mm -hmm. it's not even close and they're like what i'm like yeah because if you think about it and you look at it all these uh racist groups are based 
in Christianity, mm-hmm. whether it's the KKK, neo-Nazism, all of a sudden, whether it's Catholic or Protestant, it's all radical Christians. Yeah. And most of it is white males. Yeah. Now they start thinking, oh, 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 that, that, that's, they're not, no, they are. They're, they're as much radical Christians as the Islamists you're thinking about are radical Islamists. It's the same thing. It is. Most of the people who are practicing uh, Muslims aren't this way. And most of the Christians aren't like neo-Nazis or, or <laughs> KKK. But you want right. to write it that way. Right. Let's write it that way. Right. But these same people now are being given jobs in our police departments or in our military. Yep. You would not hire a radical Muslim. There's no way a radical Muslim could be a, a, a cop. But you make them sheriffs. You make them deputies. You make them sergeants. Time and time and time again. Either you're looking past it or not even looking for it. And some of it's right in your face. Mm, These guys mm. are getting jobs with tattoos on their arms that shows exactly who they serve. And it's not this public. It's 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 a it's an agenda by a group that they've been steeped in since probably they were born. Mm. In Alabama, Tennessee, Louisiana, and even here in America, I mean in, in California, we have plenty of neo Nazis and wanna be KKK guys out here and all over the all over the state getting jobs left and right. My buddy was just actually um sworn in as a correctional officer this past weekend okay and it's very military it's very like uh i was like not prepared for all how how like you know um army like it was was. yeah Yeah. it was very intense (laughs) you know um and then just seeing how you know militant they were and i was like wow i wasn't expecting that of him he even said the same thing and i'm thinking he's coming in because he really wants to change the what's going on with him and he's in the youth he's going to youth um corrections facilities I'm thinking there's probably a lot of guys who just want a chance to punch a kid mm. or an adult and namely black and brown ones. Yeah. yeah. And they're getting hired. <laughs> they're literally getting hired and somehow or another getting past all the personality and character tests and background checks and getting these jobs and moving up in the ranks and then creating uh, minions like themselves to come behind them and do the same thing. Mm-hmm. So, how do we change that? How do we get those people out of it? I don't think that we can. I think it's so deep. Yeah. And such a good old boy network. Mm. And they like it that way. Yeah. I don't think they want it. I know they don't want to change it. Of course not. So we're, you know, to be another form of the minority, like how the, we're not going to get that change. So what do we really do? Like, uh, again, we can't move in silence because they kill us. If we start talking, they kill us. If we just be ourselves and don't even touch you, you still come find us. So I'm like, what do you really do? to avoid being harmed do you move my son actually move, is moving to belize i think i might go with him because like <laughs> it's chill out there well you know there was a quote that said it's like how can i ever be unarmed when my skin is the weapon that you fear wow i've never heard that before. you haven't heard that no it stopped me in my tracks it that stopped me in my tracks amazing. because i've never true words have never been spoken wow true words have never been spoken and it's it's sad. It's just this is mm. the world that we live in. And what's frustrating to me is that these cops know because it's been shown throughout history that they can do anything to us and nothing will happen to them. Mm-mm. Nothing. And the one time I don't know if you you, you saw this recent uh, uh, conviction of a cop. The Mm-mm. only time that a cop has ever been. Con- well, I don't want to say only time, but this recent one time was uh, Muhammad. His name is Mohammed Noir. He's the one that killed the uh, Australian woman. Okay, yeah. yeah, uh, yeah. Because he said he feared for his life because they were parked in an alley and she just came up to the car and Mm -hmm. freaked out and scared her. He was sentenced to 12 years in jail for attempted murder. For for murder. For murder, excuse me. Manslaughter. Uh, Third degree murder and manslaughter. Let Mm. me get this right so you know. Okay. He was, yeah, he's found guilty of third degree murder and manslaughter for shooting Justine Ruskiks. I don't know how to say her last name. Um, But she's the one that uh, approached the cop car Mm -hmm. in the alley and he feared for his life. Which, if you don't remember, every single cop that has killed an unarmed black person has said those exact same words. Mm -hmm. And what's, (laughs) what's disgusting to me is that the prosecutor flat out said, What's threatening about a blonde white woman in a pink shirt? And that's what got him convicted, basically. Those were his exact words in court. So I just want, I want to make sure that everyone's understanding that a blonde white woman in a pink shirt cannot be threatening. But a black man in anything can be threatening. Yeah. Or a black a woman. A black boy. 
black boy, boy, 14 year old boy. Yeah. Uh, so that this is the world and the country that we live in and what our what our justice system is, is uh, spewing yeah. and, and showing what justice is. And of course, so he's going to be made the example like, oh, we're, you know, we're finally taking action with a cop, a cop, you know, killed an unarmed citizen and he's going to jail. It's like, no, we all knew that he was going to go to jail because he was Somali American. Right. That's that's. And I hate it when people go, it's not a racial thing. You've got to be kidding me. A blind person can see that it's a racial thing. Right? Because <laughs> in this situation, if it was flipped, if she was black and his name was John O'Malley, he's getting off. Without question. The, 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 there's not one person that's yeah. going to be no, you didn't would, test that. You not, know yeah. that that's the case. Done. You know Done. that's the case. Which we just seen recently. Um, and I brought this to your attention a couple mm-hmm. of days ago. Mm-hmm. And if you guys want to wear this, uh, a young man here in California was shot uh 55 times yes yes and it was just in 3.5 seconds in 3.5 seconds if you haven't seen this video it's amazing how fast this cop came out and just blasted this kid who was well, asleep yeah let me just give a little backstory yeah, so do. there was a uh, a phone call that said that there was a man asleep in his car and i guess he had been there a while mm-hmm. or something and so they were just worried whoever made the phone call was worried like hey there's this guy that's been asleep in his car for a while i don't know if he was on drugs or what the situation was regardless cop showed up i'm looking at this article right now cop showed up he was unresponsive in his car they fired 55 shots in 3.5 seconds this is in the city of vallejo which is in northern california and then there was a report done that said these 55 shots were reasonable reasonable 55 look one shot wasn't reasonable I can't sleep in my car now. I can't just sleep in my car without getting shot. And 55 of them is okay. Mm-hmm. Like when, when it would have, when would have been excessive? They said based on their training again. Okay. This is what it goes back mm-hmm. to. It was reasonable and excessive force was needed in this situation. Needed to, yeah, I, I'm Wait. The, reading this verbatim. He was in a Taco Bell drive thru, okay? Unresponsive in his car. And it was reasonable to shoot 55 rounds into his car because he posed a threat. <laughs> 55 sh- If you had just shot in the air 55 times, I'd have been like, yo, I. <laughs> I would have woke up in the first one, bro. Right. But to shoot me, like the little shoot in the car, because I'm sleep, sleep. And I think also there's a report that the guy said I thought there was a gun in there. O- okay, like what? Like when you can look in there and see that there isn't, and I'm unresponsive. And I'm in a Taco Bell driveway. It's obviously what happened. It's it's obvious what happened. Mm-hmm. But I'm gonna shoot him. 55 times in three seconds. Apparently he had a um, a gun in his lap. Did he have a gun in his lap? Yeah. Apparently it was says a, reportedly. Yeah, apparently. Allegedly he had a gun in his lap, but he was still asleep. Mm-hmm. Here's my thing. Sir, can you wake up? Hello, sir. Keep your hands up. Keep your hands up, please. Okay, can you use your right hand to roll down the window? Can you put the car, the gun on the passenger side? No. Did you think any of that happened? No. Did that's that's what I'm saying. Any of that happened. Reportedly had a gun. So let me shoot him, kill him first, open the door. Oh, there's a gun. Oh, let me put a gun there. Because now that makes it reasonable that I shot him 55 times. Because I've not, every time I read this, I don't see where the, I didn't see a gun. I've never seen a picture of the gun. I've just seen a picture of the dude or a video of the guy sleeping. Yeah. 55 times. The, the interesting thing is that it says the officer shouted, show me your hands, and then fired at him within seconds. So you didn't even give him a chance to no. show you his hands. Mm-mm. And that's the problem. Did it say he even woke up? Yeah, it said he started to wake up. and it's, So I'm going to read this. This is the officers on the scene devised a plan to block off McCoy's car inside the drive-thru to prevent any erratic movement. And the sad, before I finish this, the sad thing about it is that the Taco Bell people called for a welfare check because they were worried. And then he ends up losing his life because of that. 
So they did see McCoy moving and appear to scratch his arm as he's slowly waking up. McCoy then jerked up and appeared to reach down. Officers shouted, show me your hands and fired at him within a few seconds. So if you give him the command to show him your hands, when are you going to give him the chance to actually do that before you decide to kill him? That's what I'm saying. He's going to, he's <laughs> dead either way. If he doesn't move, you shoot him. If he moves, you shoot him. Yeah. Cause he was asleep in his car. Yeah. So, <sighs> I know it's exasperating to even have to 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 talk about these situations anymore. But I need people to realize how common this is. So common. So, and it, and I've always walked around and felt like, look, I, I live a life where I'm not doing stupid stuff. I don't take risks. But I have taken a nap in my car before. For sure. Thinking I'm safe here. I'm in a safe. Pl-. He's in a Taco Bell parking lot, which mm-hmm. I'm sure is well lit, which is probably a cool spot to take a nap. Because you, if you're in a dark alley or in a corner, yeah, you, you know, something's going to happen. You, yeah. He's in a lit area and he's okay. Yeah. And the Taco Bell staff feels like, oh, he's guys been there a long time. Let's make sure he's okay. They call the cops. He's dead. <laughs> like, what? Now, we know if he's white and robbing the Taco Bell, he's not getting shot. Of course not. But he's not. a black man asleep in his car. Dead. So when people talk about racism and I often get people saying stuff like, well, it's better than it used to be. I don't think so. I think what it is, is that we probably live a little bit better than our parents did, Mm -hmm. but the aggression, the violence, the stuff, it's not any different. Right. Um, How we're viewed is not different. It's not different at all. And Again, it's systemic. Like, if you go into the Constitution, if people didn't know this, there was a time where blacks were considered three-fifths of a person. Yes. Um, And that three-fifths clause was basically uh, written in to, like, give slaves the ability to vote, but, like, their vote only counted three three out of five. Three out of five counted as one and whatever. And then they changed it and repealed it. It still tells me that that's how you're looked at. Right. You're still less of a human. Right. Like, we get treated in a way still to this day that dictates that one, you're afraid of us, and two, you really don't care about us. Mm-hmm. So I'm gonna treat you just it's like it's like a rabbit dog. But this guy and and to some degree I can understand a rabbit dog being shot because it's a danger. This dude was asleep. Yeah. Like if we were really like some crazy individuals, if just black folks on a, on a general basis, like yeah, we kind of crazy, so we kind of I, I I might understand that, but we're not. Honestly, I feel like people don't even understand that we're probably the most forgiving, loving, nicest group of people. Mm-hmm. Like I've had a lot of friends of mine say, "Oh, you know, how would your family think if you dated someone else?" He says, "My family wouldn't care at all." Right. We're very accepting. And I think most black people are. I agree. Most, most black families are like, oh, okay, cool. You, you dating an Asian girl? That was cool. I see you playing or whatever. Cool. Mm-hmm. If you have a, you know, a Indian you get friend. Teased or a little friend, bit, you get but teased. at the end of the day. Yeah. Yeah. We, for we, sure. You know, for sure. Next time you come around, they family. Mm-hmm. Like, we are so accepting of people. Yeah. We're so forgiving of people. And to me, I almost feel like that's our problem. Mm. Like, we're almost too nice. <laughs> like, I almost wish we were the, the, the monsters we're portrayed to be. Because I think, honestly, they might leave us alone in. Because I, we don't fight back. And even watching this video, again, of the family, the way the dude was being, his wife would be, I was, I was ready to go down and take out these they cops myself. They were so, I mean. They were so just beyond. <laughs> like, I was, I, uh, I, I was just angry for them. And I'm like, and I'm you, glad that they weren't. Because they definitely would have gotten shot if they did, like, start to, you know, the the the, the mom definitely was like, I can't put my, like, she was like, are you dumb, basically? Yeah, I'm, she, I, got, I, yeah she got a little angry. She, well, she deserved to. Yeah. She's like, you're asking me to put my infant. She's like, she can't walk. You're right. asking me to put her on the ground. Like, what is wrong with you? But, and the guy was like, no, sir. Yes, sir. He was, sir, everything. So polite. It, it, but, yeah. I, and do you I, see the people who were recording? Yeah. They started to get a little angry. Because they're like, what are you doing? Like, what are you doing? A woman? Right. So, I, so, I'm saying... Like, I, I, I don't, I don't want to resolve to violence, but yeah. honestly, sometimes that's what's necessary. Mm-hmm. And in like, to see what was happening to that family, I felt like if that was me, 
and I, I'm, I'm getting to the point where I'm fed up. Mm-hmm. If I had saw that and been there, I think I would have attacked someone and I would have just lost it because nothing we do is working. Nothing we do is working. That's what's frustrating. Nothing. I don't care what way we decide to go at it and we try to maneuver around, figure out what, nothing. So at the end of the day, what do you leave us with other mm-hmm. than to fight back? Yeah. And when that happens, all hell is going to break loose. Yeah. Because I'm telling you right now, if 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 it's determined that, okay, here's what needs to happen. We need to fight, you know, fire with fire and we go out. It's it's going to be a race war like we've never seen. Yeah. Because there's a lot of black folks who are gearing up with guns and there's a whole bunch of black gun groups who are like prepared to go to war. Yeah. Um, I'm not. I, I'd really like to keep it the way it is and start to make these changes that I think can happen if yeah. we get some reasonable people, mm-hmm. again, like we said, in certain positions of power mm-hmm. and authority and inf- influence. But man, like it's every other day. And we've been off three weeks. Three weeks. Come right back and there's two incidences in a docuseries talking mm-hmm. about something that's just happening. Mm-hmm. Again, people think about oh, this is like back in the, in, in slavery times, in the 17, 1800. No, this is in the two thousands. People act like slavery was such a long time ago. Like it really didn't end that long. Ago, no, you guys, there's people who are just dying who were still a part of plantations, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. just dying. So that also means that their family was directly uh, influenced, touched. And somehow affected by this person that was in slavery mm-hmm. just now. Yeah. yeah. Just now. So, no, it didn't just. And even if it did, even if it was, we are still affected by it. <laughs> right. like you expect us to be okay after right. 50 or 100 years of being out of slavery? It was 400 years. Mm-hmm. 400 years. So, we didn't have the start that any white person has. And if it's just, if it ended 100 years ago, we're just having our second generation come out of that. Mm-hmm. Like, what do you expect us to do? Like, right. just come out. Oh, we good now. Everything's straight. We can be billionaires and, and have. And then, no, because the people who put us in slavery are still here, yeah. still running this country. So even if their generations are dead, they effectively somehow or another got to where they are from it. You think they want to end it? Yeah. You think they really care about us all of a sudden? Mm-hmm. And I know there's plenty of white people who who will say this. Oh, my my family didn't. Um, benefit from slavery and we didn't feel that way okay cool i get that you're really in the minority yeah <laughs> right it's right. it's not it's because turn on the news we don't yeah. see a lot of incidences of white folks treating us nicely yeah so if and that if that was the case then cool i would understand there's a few bad apples honestly there's more bad apples mm. and i i understand and we look at social media and I, I know the news always what's salacious and what's negative you know um draws more ratings than you know feel good stories and all that but honestly i think what we're seeing just really is the surface of what's going on stuff we don't see mm-hmm. like there's plenty of stuff in parts of this country that's happening that don't make the news there's systemic racism happening that's not so huge that we need to you know have a video or discussion about it it's very low level you know kind of like sub level stuff that's happening whether it's jobs education yeah uh yeah, yeah. health care um, I talk to people all the time about organ trafficking and they just look at me crazy. Like, what? Like, yeah, well, there's a bunch of people missing and when they find them, they're missing organs. I just saw an article about that the other day and I was floored. Yeah. And it was a veteran that it was a black veteran that was his body was sent back to his family without his brain, his throat and his lungs. And I was like, what? Yeah. It's been happening for years. But again, it's low level. People don't know about it. Like, who's really doing or- organ trafficking mm-hmm. like research? Mm-hmm. But you hear these crazy stories from time to time. Like, wait, what? Or like this family who got this body back. Like, uh, what happened here? Mm-hmm. And they get no information and gets up under the rug. And that's it. Mm-hmm. So then we hear, of course, these, you know, landmark cases and landmark issues and situations. But this, there's tons of stuff happening on a daily basis that we don't see. So when you have social media, pull it out and bring it out and put it in the forefront, people start realizing now, okay, cool. Now that you see it, what do we do now? Right. You know, and that's a part of what like our podcast is about is like bringing like the stuff to the forefront, but also let's now discuss making moves. Yes. Um, yes. Someone posted on Facebook the other day, like, you know, this is the reason why we kneel and this is the reason why we do this. I'm like, yeah, the kneeling was good, mm-hmm. but now there's time for action. Even Kaepernick himself knelt, made a statement and then got to work. Right. 
Like right, right, right. Kaepernick has been doing stuff, creating right. organizations, getting out and talking to people, and like trying to change what's going on. Not just I knelt and oh, hey, y'all saw me. That's cool. He's been doing things. We need to do stuff. We need to get out there and actually make some things happen. Mm-hmm. Whether it's getting in the face of these cops and their sheriffs and their captains that are imploring and training these individuals to act this way or somehow or another just doing our own thing. Like, I don't know, you know, bringing the Panthers back or something. I hear there's a White Panthers coming out. Did you hear about oh, this? Oh, no. Yeah, there's a White Panthers group uh, uh, rising. I'm not sure what you guys need the White Panthers for. I, I just uh, have <laughs> felt recently that white people have wanted to be oppressed so badly. <laughs> and I don't get it. Like, why? It's like, like, I don't understand. Like you, there, there's always this mentality of like, well, what about me? It's like, you guys have everything. And like, I'm, I don't need to get into the, please spare me the like, well, not me. I don't, I know who you are. The yeah, people that yeah, are the yes. exception. When right. I say white people, even though I'm talking generally, I'm not talking generally. So if you're getting offended by it, you need to go look in the mirror and check that out because right. I'm not talking it's not about you. you. It's not you. But it, it's just so crazy. It's like, why do you have to be a part of everything? Everything. Like we get any, even, so even us being oppressed and talking about slavery, you want that too? Like you, like what, why do you need a white Panthers? The Panthers were a group that helped us because we needed help. Right. They created, they created WIC. If you guys didn't know that the black Panthers were the ones who created WIC, which is now a government agency, but because women and infants needed food, Mm. they needed basic resources. So the black Panthers came out and did that. And then that was taken from us. So now you want to have your own white Panthers? Like, I don't get it. Like what everything we have, you want to take, <clears throat> whether it's negative or positive, because we get any kind of like attention. Like, well, we want that. We want our own. Like you have this country. Yeah. <laughs> this is all yours. I mean, it's even as simple as someone who said, like, why isn't there white entertainment television? <laughs> Every single channel is white entertainment television. Now, granted, yes, diversity is happening and all of that. But like, just we're, we're going off on a tangent a little bit, but stop it. Please. Y'all got stuff. Y'all have y'all have it all. <laughs> Even BET is owned by white folks. Yeah, Viacom. You have everything. Yeah. Stop. Can you give us just give us just this, a little bit of something. Like just, let us have something. A little bit of that you something. You don't look at, you don't touch, you don't want. Cuz as soon as you mess with it, it's gone. <laughs> and y'all jack it up. Uh, but going back to our topic, we do need to start finding solutions to these problems mm. within the criminal justice system, within pr- police brutality, and just making our voices louder. And as we do at the end of every episode, we talk about a community or organization that is doing really, really good work. And this is a, a organization that I've recently got involved with called Justice LA. I don't know if you've heard about them. Mm-hmm. But uh, recently, LA County um, has uh, allocated $3.5 billion dollars into building two new jails. Billion. Billion. Wow. Two new jails. And so what Justice LA is doing is they're doing a campaign to show the county what they can actually build with that $3.5 million. And if you want to get involved, they do a lot of rallies, they do a lot of meetings, they go down to the county jails and 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 make, you know, discuss things with people in power, just showing them in infographics and how they could reallocate this money because the jails haven't been built yet. And, the, and I'm glad that they're doing this kind of grassroots uh, campaign with them mm. to show them what they can do <clears throat> because there are so many things. So they've figured out that they could build with that money 280 youth centers, 2,000 single family homes, 240 assisted living f- facilities for the mentally ill, and over 1,500 transitional apartments for the homeless. That is where that money needs to be. All that could be made with $3 billion. With $3.5 billion as opposed to two jails. Two jails. So check out what Justice LA mm. is doing. They they have events all the time, and, I, and it's a really great organization, and I love what they're doing, and I really think that they're going to make a difference and hopefully convince LA County to not put this $3.5 million be nice. towards jails. It would be amazing because they're – the homeless is something I'm very passionate about. And that's an, like, why wouldn't you not build facilities for the homeless to get rehabilitated, to help them with job work, do things the way that, you know, Ella Mission is doing. This is something that this county needs to be Ooh, focused on. On the next episode, we need to talk about this homeless problem. Yes. Because yes. it, it's it's ridiculous. These 10 You've, cities. Yeah. It's, it's amazing how yeah. many I keep seeing. And I've had people get in. I've been Ubering uh, recently. Mm-hmm. And people who come from other states or countries, that's the biggest topic i keep what's with the homeless folks it's like small towns now yes popping up on streets yeah. just fo- like 
Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, this has been something in the past yeah. like 18 months. For yeah. some reason, something yeah. right now has just happened. And I don't know what it is. So we, next episode, yeah, we're, we can talk we're about definitely going to talk about it. So make sure you subscribe, share, like, comment, get involved in the conversation. Uh, we're happy to be back. Yes. And uh, we will talk to you guys next week. Be good. Bye. Later.